Years ago, I was uh, the priest in Moscow, Idaho, and um, there's a town just north of Moscow, this little, little tiny town, I think it's called Viola, and uh, one of our parishioners lived there. He was always a really nice guy, joyful, just naturally joyful, and I always noticed him because um, he would always show up to Mass late, and... Um, one day, he asked me to come out to his house because his mother uh, was a great woman, but she was dying. So I went out, drove out, and anointed her, and it was kind of amazing. After that, uh, we had lunch, and the amazing part was this. So I'm in his house, and down the hallway uh, from the kitchen, you can see this bedroom, and the door is open. And then all of a sudden... A uh, fawn, a baby deer, a fawn pops its head up and looks at us. And the guy says, Oh, look who's awake. <laughs> There's a fawn in the bedroom. And then it just voided all over the floor, so that was a little shocking. And I said, What, what, is, a, what is a fawn doing here? And he says, uh, you know, These animals find me. Uh, I don't know how they find me. And this fawn showed up, and so I'm just feeding and nursing it. It has its own bedroom. Weirdest thing. Then after that, um, uh, the sliding glass door was open. This hawk flew in and just uh, stood on one of the kitchen ta uh, table chairs for well, about 30 seconds and then flew off. And I said, what about the hawk? And he said, oh, I found that. That was hurt and uh, nursed it back to health. And sometimes he comes and visits me. And the amazing part is there is a bunch of these animals around his place in this little, little tiny town. And he, the other thing that amazed me about him is that, well, first, just the fact that I felt like I was having lunch with St. Francis. Um, you know, the house was Dr. Doodle's house. But even more so, I was just struck at his incredible wisdom. Um, he was a joyful person, but also just wise. And I just mentioned that because even though he lived in Das Hinterland, way out, he was actually more connected to life. And one of the proofs of the resurrection is that Christ is in us, connecting us to life and wisdom and truth. And this man exemplified it. Even these lost, hurt animals found their way to him. And on Easter, we celebrate the resurrection, that we are reborn in the resurrection, connected through Christ to all life in this mystical way, to the source of love and forgiveness and wisdom. And that kind of reminds me, that story reminds me of Mary Magdalene in the gospel. Because think about this. Mary Magdalene at the beginning of the gospel, she's mourning, she's sad, she's isolated, she's moving really just among the dead. She's cut off from community. And then, by the end of the gospel, you realize she's filled with life and joy and connected to the community. And that's going to happen to all the apostles. Peter, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, but over the next 50 days, all the apostles will move from fear and, and isolation into joy and community. That's one of the proofs of the resurrection, that we become a new creation. So when Christ was resurrected, it was on the first day of creation, uh, Sunday. So that's why we celebrate the Eucharist on the first day of the week, because Christ was resurrected. Christ was resurrected on the first day of creation, because in the resurrection, we have become a new creation. So uh, Fulton Sheen used to say, it's a most important day in history. The most important day of history is not... You know, the signing of the Constitution or St. Patty's Day or even Christmas. The most important day of actually history is the resurrection, which we celebrate today. As he said, and I like this phrase, it's the day the true revolution started. 
And when he says true revolution, he means the revolution of humanity becoming this place of love and life. That's what we celebrate today, that the resurrection happens in us. And the really odd part about this Easter is what's happened with the coronavirus. In some ways, and I know this is going to sound strange, this has been the best Lent ever. Um, I know that sounds strange, but think about this, or at least I should say the most serious Lent ever. Because we start off Lent, and as we always do, and Lent is supposed to be this time of self-examination and looking at death. Um, and in this Lent, as odd it is with coronavirus, it has been a time to kind of review what's most important in life. And for many people, just living in this isolation, what we miss most is connection. One woman said, and I just think this is funny, one woman said that she misses like just the small talk of walking into a coffee shop and hearing people talk or walking in and then there's a line and you think, ah, oh, I can't believe there's two people in front of me. She says, now I kind of have reminisced about the times that I had to wait, that people miss this connection with other people. And in Lent, we're supposed to be examining our lives so we stop outsourcing happiness. And I mean stop outsourcing happiness, that if I only had this or that or this, I'd be happy. In Lent, we're supposed to die to this. So in some ways, this coronavirus has been the best Lent ever because we had to um, examine ourselves. And my hope is this also becomes the best Easter ever. That, yes, with Easter, we don't have the crowds. People don't dress up. We don't have the little kids outside uh, doing an Easter egg hunt. But hopefully this Lent, we, or sorry, this Easter, we're more connected to ever than the resurrection. And in the Gospel, uh, in the Gospel of John, Jesus repeats seven times um, I am statements. The word I am, uh, that's actually how you'd say Yahweh. And he says, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. When he says this, or I am the water of life, um, it's really saying he's God. Yahweh and I am are the same word. That Christ is saying he is God, that he is the God of life and the God of love and the God of community. And in the resurrection, we're one with that. Uh, the resurrection proves that God's love is more powerful than death. That death, we think, is the most powerful thing in the world, but it's not. The most powerful force in the world is God's love, and in the resurrection, it flows through us. That God's life is far more powerful than the coronavirus. We're, in the resurrection, we're more connected than ever. And so, the same way I feel like it was a, the best Lent ever, I hope it becomes the best Easter ever and makes our religion even better. Because religion, religion is not about being polite. It's not about moral rules and regulations of how to be nice. Nor is religion about just having the right theological answers. Uh, religion is also not about just getting into heaven. That's how Hollywood often picks pictures, religion. It's just about, you know, moral rules or being nice or people trying to get into heaven. Actually, our religion is about getting heaven into us, that the resurrection happens now. Our religion is to become one with the resurrection. And in the resurrection, we become one with each other. We become one with all of life because we're one with the source of life. Our religion is supposed to be mystical. So for the next 50 days of Easter, we're supposed to move closer into the source of love and life, the resurrection. In Easter, we're supposed to be reborn from bitterness and loneliness into joy, away from isolation into real deeper community, the mysticism. Um, away from anger and fear into faith. 
So the resurrection, when we celebrate Christ is resurrected, we mean Christ is resurrected now. The fullness of life can flow through us now. That's like the guy in Moscow, Idaho, or outside of Moscow. Um, he actually was even, I think, suffering from cancer, and yet fully alive. God's love is more powerful than death, connects us even more. And so that when we celebrate the resurrection, the resurrection, or Easter, is not a celebration of the anniversary of Christ's resurrection. We'd say Christ's resurrection is a living reality now that we can find signs of the resurrection everywhere, especially in people. Uh, That's why we baptize during Easter, that, wow, Christ is reborn in a community. Christ can be found in the breaking of the bread. And we play this little game with kids of hiding the Easter eggs. The egg symbolizes life, Um, that everywhere, If you have eyes of love, you can see the signs of the resurrection hidden everywhere. There's even a website, and I kind of like this. The website is called um, Corona Kindness. And it's called Corona Kindness because people just tell stories of amazing acts of kindness, even during this coronavirus plague. The signs of the resurrection is all around us. And on Easter... Yes, we do baptize people, that Christ is resurrected in a people, but also for all Catholics. um, Easter starts with the blessing of the holy water. Everybody renews their baptismal vows, and then the priest blesses the water, and then he sprinkles the water on us, but we're all living in isolation. Um, There's very few of us here, but if you could see from my point of view... We have hundreds of pictures of our parishioners uh, in the pews that you're still with us. So I'm still going to bless the holy water, bless your pictures, that all of us, I hope, this Easter are truly blessed with Christ moving and living in us. As I said, nothing is more powerful than God's life and love in the universe. And now we celebrate that it moves through us. And so... Um, let us stand to renew our baptismal promises.